Welcome to episode six of the Six Lessons podcast. This week's we're going to be highlighting the practical application of decoupling with time, how to overcome the hierarchy of vulnerability. And the paper that we're going to highlight is this paper that I published with Simone Della Perry in 2009. It was in PPAD, Practical Aesthetic Dentistry. And the title of the, of the article is Stress Reducing Protocol for Direct Composite Restorations in Minimally Invasive Cavity Preparations. And so as I beta tested in my own office from 1998 to 2003, the techniques, then the question was, how do we apply this as far as spreading it to other doctors who may be interested in tooth conserving dentistry? And so in 2003, I made the decision to start teaching. Other doctors made the offer to uh, friends of mine who uh, were interested. The very first one was Dr. Arnaud Note. And we started teaching courses um, in 2003. And for five years, as we taught the courses, the articles that we used in teaching, there were first 20 articles, and then we added a couple of more, 22, then we went to 25. And of course, every time I gave a course, I was always tempted to add another article or two to make everything clear. Well, in reality, what the dentists really want is a cookbook. They want to know what to do, what to start, step by step. And so that cookbook evolved into 14 or 17 steps that we teach in our hands-on programs. But the literature that allows us to say this is what you should do based on science, it grew every year and continues to grow. But in reality, the growth, when it goes to 100 articles or 400 articles or 600 or 1,000 or 2,000 or 3,000 articles, at some point, the master teacher has to make a selection. And that selection is based on the knowledge of what's important and the scientific base that needs to be demonstrated, if not totally understood by the student. Well, as this evolution of who's going to be the next generation of teachers, and in 2002, I was torn between, should I teach or should I just let uh, young, potentially great teachers like Simone Della Perry uh, take the lead? Pascal Magni already had his book published in 2002 had a, a lot of good ideas about minimally invasive biomedic approaches. But I made a decision uh, based on my initial introduction to other dentists and their interest to start teaching. And in 2003, I started to visit other potential leaders in this movement. Many of them were associated with universities, which I traveled to. And Simone Della Perry being in Italy, it was a little bit uh, tricky because a trip to Italy is a long ways and quite expensive, but he did come over once a year to Tufts to give a lecture on his technique that was published in 2002. The technique didn't have a, a name at that time, but it had the idea of stress reduction. And the technique that he was teaching at Tufts would reach maybe 40 doctors a year. And then his partner, Dave Bardwell, would teach undergraduate uh, students' this technique. But if you only reach 40 doctors a year on a two-day course, the impact on the whole profession is small. And a dental school like Tufts has many faculty members, and the faculty members that drew close to Simone Della Perry had great uh, techniques and could teach but the vast majority of the faculty members at Tufts did not take advantage of that relationship. And that became clear to me when I visited Simone Della Perry at Tufts for the lectures that he was giving in 2007. And in 2007, when I heard his lecture, I had introduced myself through uh, actually Dave Rudo through email. And uh, that connection from Dave Rudo came because both of us were very interested in Semabelli's published articles in 2006 and 2007 on ribbon placement in restorations. 
So we can kind of say that Dave Rudo was the matchmaker between all of Della Perry. But when I flew to Boston and we started to talk, we went through our lectures that we had been giving. I had been giving lectures for five years at that time. And Simone's lecture I had just heard and watched his hands-on uh, program that he gave to, to practicing dentists. We felt like we were very close in all of the protocols and ideas. And these protocols and ideas really rested on the understanding of C-factor, as we've talked about in episode four. And so when we put our heads together, we decided to uh, stay close and made a plan for teaching more or publishing articles. The first article that we published together was published in 2009. And this is the article. And this article gave a title to this new technique. Uh, first, we were looking for titles, and the first one that Simone came up with, maybe I came up with it, but we both decided it was a, a bad title, was a complex composite technique. <laughs> so we felt like if we use the word complex composite technique, it would be a immediate turnoff because most most dentists want to have um, their life simplified, right? Of course, the simplification of having successful dental treatments is worth the effort of some of the complexity of some of the techniques that we've developed. But we, uh, we made this uh, paragraph. I'll, I'll read this. It says, although the performance of dental bonding systems has improved from early formulation, the stress from polymerization shrinkage and occlusal lo loading still challenge the bonds of adhesive systems and the tooth itself. This can cause enamel cracking, cusp fracture, marginal leakage, post-op sensitivity, and recurrent decay. Nikaido and his colleagues showed that 60% of bond strength can be lost in high C-factor bulk-filled restorations under functional loads. Such issues of bond strengths versus C-factor have previously been addressed with three techniques. And these three techniques are still taught and understood by many, but not systematically implemented in the biomimetic restorative dental protocols that are taught or not taught at dental schools. But this is a start. The first approach was by Fusiyama. And he recommended the use of chemically cured composites with slow setting characteristics that had high flow and stress relief. Now, Ray Berlotti, my first mentor, recommended this. But there is a major problem, as we referred to last uh, episode, in that the hierarchy of bondability means that with chemical cure, you have to wait 20 minutes to overcome this hierarchy of bondability. And with bulk fill, not only do you have to wait 20 minutes, but you are connecting all of the layers of the hierarchy at the same time. That was Fusiyama's big problem. It always resulted in lower bond strengths in the deep areas of the preparation. But if you had high bond strength because you had a lot of enamel to bond to, that would still be a successful restoration in most cases. The second approach after Fusiyama was DDA Dici that published in the book that he published with Roberto Sprefico in 1997. And he suggested a semi-direct restorative technique that the polymerization was done outside the mouth to re reduce the polymerization shrinkage to primarily the looting adhesive agent. And this technique I learned from Dici himself in 2000. I took a two-day course at UCLA in Los Angeles. and. Uh, that technique has a major flaw. And the major flaw is that you have a hierarchy of bondability between the tooth and the pre polymerized inlay onlay. When I went to LA, I wanted to see if DDA Dici had figured this out. And after two days, I said, I think you're, you know, the best dentist teaching in the world right now. This is 2000. But obviously, he had some things that we disagreed about, but I, as a student, I wasn't in a position or it wouldn't have been appropriate to uh, have a deep discussion with Dietje at that time. The third approach by Dietje's protege, Pascal Bagne, used an indirect technique with immediate dent and sealing to increase the strength of the dental body system. 
Thus, IDS allowed the Denton bond time to mature before it was challenged by the polymerization stress of the resin cement. Now, that's published in uh, the late 1999 by Manye and also 1998 in Dichi. They knew it, it was a mistake, this semi direct approach without immediate Denton sealing. So, this evolution of immediate Denton sealing coming in at about 1998. That's exactly when I started to understand that immediate Denton sealing was absolutely fundamental. But I came through literature that was coming out of University of Zurich, not the University of, of Geneva. But Peter Scher and Stefan Paul had proposed this concept that they called dual bonding. And it was really proposed to overcome the problem of bonding to temporary cement that was contaminating the Denton when the Onley was bonded to the Denton. So they proposed this dual bonding technique where you're bonding the Denton and then you can't contaminate the Denton with the cement. So it's an evolutionary step towards immediate Denton sealing. Understanding immediate Denton sealing as far as how bond test strengths, how bond strengths were impacted, all of that was to come in the future. But around the 1998, in Europe, in the United States, in Japan that had already been published in 1994 by Sato. These concepts that were coming together, uh, Bert Stinger was an a important researcher out of Zurich, one of the students of Peter Scher and Stefan Paul. All of this idea that immediate dent sealing is the only way to make a semi-direct restoration work. So Dietschy published an article in PPAD in 1998 that corrected that. It wasn't a very explicit article, but it did have that detail of immediate dent and sealing. Even a deep margin ele elevation was had a small illustration in that 1998 article in PPAD. But it was a step, I believe, that was understood in Japan, but it wasn't pushed as much as it could have been. But again, hindsight's 2020. So we talked about Fusiyama's technique, Dichi's technique, Manye's technique. And now in this article, we say this article presents a fourth way to solve the C-factor problem via a stress-reducing direct composite technique. So that's the first time that the phrase stress-reducing direct composite technique was introduced into the literature. Now it's obviously used because it is a fourth way that was introduced to overcome the problems of C-factor and the problems of hierarchy of bondability, which I had shared with Simone in 2008. Um, and we started to publish that um, and teach that uh, when we taught together. We taught together for 10 years from 2008 to 2018. But the stress-reduced direct composite method dissipates the stresses of polymerization by utilizing precise layering and light curing protocols. This technique is extremely important for minimally invasive dentistry, as the conservative preparations often have high C factor. In other words, once you make a small preparation, you always have multiple walls. If you have a large preparation, then the walls are not contributing to the C factor stresses. In a veneer preparation, for example, the preparation kind of looks like a plate. We don't have competing walls that can stress that developing hybrid layer. But in most class two, class three restorations, we have multiple walls. And this, to conserve two structure, has to be dealt with in terms of reducing C factor stresses particularly in the posterior mouth, where the forces of occlusion are 10 times as strong as the anterior forces. And so by using the stress-reducing direct technique, the complex geometry of minimally invasive preparations can be treated in the most conservative manner. Manya has termed all low-stress, highly bonded, advanced adhesive techniques as biomimetic because they mimic the stress-strain neutrality of a natural tooth. The stress-reduced direct composite is thus minimally invasive and biomimetic. But the one thing it is, is not simpler. In other words, if you take an impression of your bio base, it's simpler, it's easier. 
costs a little bit more money. If you scan it through a CAD CAM, there are costs associated with the CAD CAM semi-direct technique. But again, you have to have the return on your investment of time with profitability in an office. Some offices, like Simone Della Perry's, they're totally profitable with using only the stress-reduced direct technique. But most offices will use a semi-direct made chair side, the onlay made chair side, or with a CAD CAM, or an indirect technique, taking an impression of the bio base and sending it to the lab for the enamel replacement fabrication. And so these techniques, as they started to become elucidated, it became obvious that certain of the early techniques like Fusiyama's had to be set aside, except in certain cases where there was no hierarchy of bondability. And the example of that is inside a pulp chamber of an endodontically treated tooth. Inside the pulp chamber, all of the walls have equal amount of hydroxyapatite. So the adhesive grabbing of those walls is equal. And the only stress that can happen is either bringing the walls together, which won't happen in a, in a pulp chamber because there's two structures supporting that, or the molecules in the polymer will become rearranged. That's exactly what you want with a chemically cured composite chamber restoring an endodontically treated tooth. So we do teach Fusiyama's chemical cure approach in endodontically treated molars, but you can also use these other techniques to restore endodontically treated teeth also. We call that Lesson seven, that's beyond the six lessons, but uh, it's a very important technique, and uh, we can probably have a whole episode on lesson seven. But the idea is that once this was introduced in 2009, and it was being taught every year in different seminars and different teaching, I went to Italy seven times, Simone came to the United States, uh, Utah twice, uh, and teaches at Boston at Tufts every year. And so for 10 years, the more aggressive teaching of this stress-reduced direct technique was understood as a real option. And around the world where CAD-CAM access or even lab access might be limited, the idea of a stress-reduced direct technique is very attractive, particularly because we had added at that time in 2006 and 7 the wallpapering technique, which allowed us to use ribbon to relieve the C-factor stresses to any particular part of the preparation where the ribbon was applied. And uh, when we had our first meeting face-to-face in 2007, we were talking very specifically about the paper that was published that year by Sema Belli. I told Simone how embarrassed I was when I indicated to Jack Farrakane that he was doing great research. I really liked his research, and Jack Farrakane laughed his head off because in 2006, I didn't know if Samuel was a man or a woman, and he knew, and uh, he let me know that she's a woman. But Sema, in connection with Simone Della Peria and myself, that connection has been very strong as we've met fa- face-to-face, and the face-to-face meetings have come at meetings like the International Association of Dental Research. Um, Simone Della Peri and I had a presentation in 2009 in Miami Beach. Wow. Hey, I got the year right. 2009. 2009, Miami Beach, immediate uh, International Association of Dental Research. This is uh, when we actually did the final finishing of the article that was published that same year. The presentation that was made at Miami Beach We had some pretty significant interactions with different leaders in composite dentistry around the world. In Holland, a a professor, Nick Obdam, was there. He was actually the co-chair of the session that Simone and I presented our research. And uh, he's a professor at Nijmegen in, in Holland. Also, Tom Hilton was there, and Tom Hilton's a professor at Oregon. And these um, two instructors and teachers influenced students greatly, but Simone and I had a a different approach that we felt was very applicable and should be taught 
in every dental school, even if the restoration is not completely done top to bottom with the stress reduced direct technique, the technique needs to be used in these deepest areas where dentin is m- missing close to the pulp or subgingivally and approximately on a root, because those areas only have. 70% at max of the amount of hydroxyapatite that dentin has that's more superficial. And so we need to separate those bonds from more superficial bonds by this process of decoupling, meaning not s- connecting them for a certain amount of time. Simone's first paper in 2002, the decoupling period was three minutes. Uh, we both agreed that three minutes was cutting too close. And we would teach for the rest of our careers five minutes as a minimum of decoupling with time. And that allowed us to help the bond strengths in these difficult to bond areas maximize. And then with a layer of ribbond, we were actually able to decouple even permanently that layer that is deepest to the pulp that has the most importance as saving the pulp's health. And it has the ability to stretch, and that stretching is in the ribbon instead of the stretching of the hybrid layer off the dentin, which is the foundation of weakening a dentin bond under C factor stresses. So, when Simone and I decided to change the world, <laughs> we needed help. And uh, over the years, we have recruited and taught a cadre of teachers of the stress-reduced direct composite technique in 2013, five years after our initial presentation here. We brought Simone over in 2008 to teach. Had about 30 doctors here in Utah that learned that that technique uh, from Simone personally. Ray Bertolotti was in that class. Dave Rudo was in that class. But as the years have gone on, we've seen that The concept that every biomimetic restoration has a direct component is a piece of information that is missed by everyone that isn't trained. They don't get it. All dentists kind of look at the top of the tooth and they wonder, wow, you know, how did you get such great anatomy? Or how did you get such great color match? Or You know, the idea that the top of the tooth is what dentists are looking at is a fundamental brain program. You know, you could call it brainwashing, but dental schools really concentrate on how the top of the tooth looks. And no dental school, except perhaps uh, Groningen in Holland and Geneva and Zurich in Switzerland and Diego Portales in Chile and Federal University of the Amazon in Manaus, there's probably eight universities that dental students are getting the concept that the most important part of any restoration is the part that's closest to the tooth. And so every biomimetic restoration that has a connection side to side, front to back, and top to bottom at 30 megapascals or more they all have a media dentin sealing and a resin coating and a period of time before the next layers are connected to that most important connection of the tooth, which mimics the hybrid layer. So, I believe that about wraps up our lecture on stress-reduced direct technique, publication, and history. We'll go more into that in future episodes. Until then, get bonded, stay bonded.